Today on Monkey Life. Yep. Oh, oh, oh. New Capuchin oh. Babe's a bit of an escape artist. <laughs> Something's wrong with Britain's best known chimp. Our biggest worry was that we've got something sinister happening. And what happens when lunch bites back? This is Monkey World in Dorset. Tucked away deep in the English countryside, it's the largest sanctuary for monkeys and apes on the planet. And this is Dr. Alison Cronin, the primate's best friend. Alison and her team spend their lives rescuing... Pretty huge, yeah, it doesn't get much huger. ..and rehabilitating primates from all over the world. You see, we're all head-shaking, hello. They currently look after more than 240 monkeys and apes from 15 different species. Alison and animal director Jeremy are on their way to Reyes Airport in northern Spain with Babe and Amy, two capuchin monkeys needing a new home. Their British owners, Kevin and Anne, who've been living in Spain for 10 years, are returning to the UK. But they're unable to continue looking after their pets. They appeal to Alison for help, and the two capuchin sisters are to be rehomed at Monkey World. After a two-hour flight, Alison and Jeremy arrive at Bournemouth, having secured special permission to bring the monkeys through the small airport so they don't have to suffer the stress of the large, noisy terminals at Heathrow or Gatwick. Is it OK if I have a quick look, mate? Alison is anxious to make sure Babe and Amy survive the flight. Have a quick look, make sure we're all OK. See you OK? Yeah, I just saw movement. Yeah, everybody's brilliant. Really good. Right, let's get him unloaded. So, another job well done, really pleased. Everybody here at Bournemouth Airport's been fantastic. Babe and Amy are just waking up now. They've got, of course, 88 others to meet back at home. Well, maybe not quite 88, but quite a few other members to meet back at home, so. With nothing to declare, the team heads straight off to Monkey World. The rescue centre already has four groups of capuchin monkeys, but before Babe and Amy can join any of them, they need to be moved into secure accommodation and given all over health checks. The primate care staff have prepared the capuchin's bedroom and are on hand to help. Make sure Jeremy's happy with whatever the plan is. It's yeah, do it loose now. now. Yeah. Because I don't know, they're a bit dopey. I don't know that they'll just come running out. They might. You've got the door. Just mind out if he shoots back behind you. But you're good. Yep. Oh, oh, oh. Got him on. Oh, yeah. Oh, good. Not that dopey. The travel sedative has definitely worn off. Hey, you. Hey, missus. Have her. Have her. Have her. Have her. No, no, no. Too slow. Babe Let proves to be something of an escape artist, evading the staff's attempts to persuade her into her new bedroom. OK. Right, go for it. <laughs> She's even too quick for Alison. Girl. You're a good girl. You're a good girl. Eventually, it's Jeremy who triumphs. He's got her. <laughs> Pop up on the keeling front. Okay. Yeah. With Babe secure, it's Amy's do turn. Here. All we'll do is here. You lock me in, and then I'll go in the bedroom that she isn't in, and then you let me out. Plan B. Yeah, just scoot that in. You good? Good girl. You're a good girl. 
Plan B works, and Amy is safely locked in the bedroom. But so is Jeremy. He opts to climb through the hatch into the next door enclosure, but he's a little larger than a capuchin. No, hang on, I want my clothes. I want my wardrobe. I'll have to shoot. Right, now shut it. Serves me right. Well done. You we just... Well done, you. missus. You're not here to think. <laughs> OK, so you can let them back together and we can get the other box as and when. OK. We'll keep Babe and Amy in sort of three bedrooms across from the other capuchins for the next couple of days. And then um, I'll be wanting Mike Nathan to do a health check on both of them. Then it'll be down to Cara and Hannah and the team here in the house to decide which group we consider letting them meet with. We'll have to take Babe and Amy's lead now. Alison and the team have rescued chimps from all over the world, but one of their most famous cases was much closer to home. Trudy lived at the park undercover for almost a year, while a headline-grabbing court case played out. Secret filming showing circus owner and trainer Mary Chipperfield beating and verbally abusing her caused public outrage. I'm not in that sort of a mood. Monkey World gave expert testimony at court, and the park was eventually awarded custody of Trudy. Now she lives happily with other chimps in the group led by alpha male Hananya. But over the last couple of weeks, there's been growing concern. Trudy has been walking stiffly and looking uncomfortable. Hello, mister. Good boy. Where's Trudels? Yesterday, Keepers called in Alison to monitor the chimps' morning release into the outdoor enclosure. What became clear is that there was some sort of situation occurring in her lower back come pelvic region. And it meant that when she moved, her movements forward and backwards with her trunk were very stiff and awkward, and you could almost see her sort of wincing as she did it. I think when you look at her, it's what I've said to all of the primate care staff, I think that we've got an injured ape as opposed to a sick ape. So we can't tell her to stop with the exercise, but we're trying to keep the pain relief at a reasonable level where it gives her a bit of comfort, but not so much so that she starts flying around the enclosure again. So that's a really tricky balance. How much pain relief do you give? But Trudy can't be sent for physio. So Alison's called in local vets Mike Nathan and David Harding to help Femke, the park's vet, give her a full examination, just in case. They've decided an X-ray and a full set of tests are the way forward. Dave's going to take the X-rays and have a look and see if there's anything grossly that we can see on that. We're going to take blood samples, routine, but we also want to take some muscle biopsies at this stage. It may be that she's got to have more investigations done, but this is just the basic, a basic workup, trying to do as much as we can while she's, um, while she's asleep. And also just get some general pictures of her overall inside her chest and her abdomen, because she's always been quite a small chimp, just to see if there's anything else going on. Too. But Alison is worried that Trudy's problems could have an underlying cause. Now, we know that from the age of, say, two years old, Trudy was beaten quite brutally by Mary Chipperfield. Now, you know, maybe once upon a time as a youngster, she dislocated a hip, which has left the ball and joint socket on her hip sort of open and loose, and maybe she's now having an arthritic problem because of her previous treatment. It could be related to her past history. We're always aware of that, um, but only time will tell, and we'll be looking to the vets to give us a be hopefully give us a more solid, concrete answer to these questions. It would be heartbreaking if, having got over all her early trauma, something was now to go wrong.
Alison and Jeremy have just brought home two capuchins from Spain. If all goes well, they may eventually join the group led by alpha female Debbie. A settled bunch of girls who all came from a laboratory in Chile and are thought to be mostly captive bred. In the wild, feisty capuchins are very inquisitive. They spend most of their time investigating their South and Central American rainforest home, searching for hidden food sources. They're normally found in groups of up to 50 and are thought to be the most intelligent of all monkeys, putting them on a par with apes. The Dorset Centre has 88 capuchins spread across its four social groups. Like Babe and Amy, when they arrived, they hadn't experienced the great outdoors or much social interaction. But they're learning to socialise with one another. To help nurture natural behaviour, Debbie's group is going to have a treat they've never encountered before. In the wild, um, people have had lots of observations of uh, troops of capuchins obtaining different types of shellfish from um, rivers within the forest. And uh, capuchins are well known for their ability to uh, crack open and tool use and stuff. So this morning, we're just putting some American crayfish into their pond as part of their enrichment. So this should really make the most of the capuchins' uh, intelligence and ability and um, hopefully give them something new and exciting to do today. Hannah counts the crayfish as she puts them into the pond and will make sure none escape into local waterways. Worst case scenario um, for this project is that the capuchins won't even notice that we've put these guys in, <laughs> so there'll be no interaction or trying to obtain them at all. The best case is uh, they'll all be trying to grab them and spend the rest of the day cracking them open and uh, having a really nice um, feed off them. All the capuchins that arrived from Chile a year ago, we couldn't have even done a project like this with them because they were still um, finding the climbing and outside are quite scary and terrifying. But now they've really started acting like proper capuchins. It's just shown today how happy they are. And it'd be nice to do it again in a week or maybe a month to see if they've actually remembered and maybe improved their technique. But it looks like Molly is already starting to get the hang of it. The vets are still waiting for Chimp Trudy to fall asleep after being anaesthetised. She's about to undergo a biopsy and x-rays. It's a serious procedure, but the monkeys and apes at the park suffer from ordinary ailments too, just like people. Treating them can be a challenge for the primate care team. Well done. The animals must be happy to allow them to administer creams and ointments, and this takes training. Over at the orangutan nursery, young Linga suffers from a dry skin complaint. The only solution is a specialist cream applied to the dry areas under her arms and groin. 
Initially, when she first got this condition, we had to go in with her and we used to make out we were playing while one of us, myself or Rita, would put a bit of cream on her finger and then grab it, the opportunity, rub it in and carry on in that sense. When it kept reoccurring, we thought we couldn't keep doing this. It wasn't fair on the others. They were, you know, they wanted to join in and play. And the reason we separated her off is that we've actually trained her to accept us putting cream on those areas. Penny has separated Linga and her friend Dinda from the rest of the group. It means we don't have to go in with her and pretend to play and, and try and get the cream on that way. She's quite happy to present her armpit or her groin and we can put the cream on and it's made such a difference. Her skin is so much better now. So how do you persuade a baby orangutan to allow a little personal grooming? We'll ask Linga for her underarm. Once she presents it and we get the cream onto her underarm, I'll give a click. She knows she's done the right behaviour then and she'll get her reward, which is a little bit of milk drink because Linga will do practically everything for, for milk. She'll juggle balls. She really does love her milk. So we'll give it a go and we'll see how we get on. Linga, underarm? Underarm? You want the milk? Good girl. Good girl. Give me that underarm. Good girl. That's the one. Good girl. Yeah, you are, aren't you? Underarm. Good girl. She's a little bit anxious, but it's not affecting her at the moment. We've got it so well trained now that she's still quite willing to do anything for this little bit of milk, so it's brilliant. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. She's a good girl. Good girl, Dinda. Chimp Trudy has been showing signs of back problems. The vets have been called in to give her a thorough examination. In order to minimise the amount of time Trudy is under anaesthetic, they decide to carry out the procedures in a room next to the chimp bedroom. First, the team must intubate Trudy before Femke oh, takes a number of blood samples. Right. OK. Good. Well yeah, done. Let's eat. Keep her on 4% for a few minutes. Do you want to start taking your bloods? Yep. But the tricky procedure is the muscle biopsy. Poor thing's going to have th three different sites, quite large chunks of muscle removed to have a look and see if they can uh, tell us whether there's any abnormalities. And um, she's going to feel a bit sore with that pulled out of her, I would have thought. She's stable and Dave's going to do the x-rays. Now, when those x-rays are done, you've got to be right out of the area, OK? To save time, they do the biopsies between x-rays, making each incision while Dave prepares the next plate. It's important they monitor Trudy's vital signs throughout. The stress of the anaesthetic can be too much for some chimps. OK. The care staff step out of the room while the x-ray machine is in use. OK. Then it's straight on to the next procedure. Can you just pull her leg so that they're getting to the back? That's it. Mike carefully takes a small muscle sample from Trudy's thigh before stitching the incision. Right, that's a muscle sheath there. Skin muscles, I think. Right, Femke, there you go. Yeah. yeah All right. Thanks. Excuse me. 
The team watch anxiously as he prepares for the next cut. So Trudy right, is a much loved snail. chimp, Just... and she's been out for over an hour already. Right, okay, here's our muscle. So when you get the results back from these muscle biopsies, Mike, what kinds of things would be possible? Our biggest worry with an animal like this, of this age, Dave and I were chatting last night, that's doing these sorts of things, is that we've got something sinister happening. It's not what Alison wants to hear. Seamus is half her age so and far bigger and more robust, albeit he's a male chimp, of course, but nonetheless, um, he's significantly bigger in just about every way, and she's double his age. So there's something not quite right here, and hopefully everybody, everybody's efforts oh, will be able to shed a bit of light onto that. that Procedure over. Jeremy and Femke carry Trudy to a bedroom to recover with the help of oxygen. It's been stressful for Trudy and Mike. The lists of what could be going on here, if you, if you look through the differential lists, we're really completely in the dark. There's a limit, you know, we're, we're gonna, you, with these things you start simply and, and work up. I, mean, I think we've done what we can at this stage, um, but we are in the dark. It'll be an anxious wait for the results to come through. Next time on Monkey Life, Alison goes to the rescue of Samantha the Squirrel Monkey. We're gonna need to sort her out before she gets anywhere near any of our primates. And young chimp Ben comes face to face with alpha male Hernania.